Hey guys, uh, welcome to the first in uh, what's going to be a, I guess, a series of videos uh, showcasing DC's 100 pagers. Uh, just recently uh, got the last one I needed, and I'm sure some of you saw the video for that where I got the love stories and the issue number five. Uh, so you know how big a deal it is when you've uh, been trying to collect a run for several years, and uh, you know, so I was I was kind of giddy. <laughs> To say the least, when I finally got that last one, I kind of went through and made sure, yes, I do have all of them now. Uh, but this first video <clears throat> is going to be uh, just concentrating on the uh, the actual title, uh, DC 100 Page Spectacular. And this started in 1971, and this thing has some funky numbering, as some of you probably already know. Uh, there was no number one through three. The, the actually first uh, the first issue is number four. And I've read several articles on this, and uh, as near as I can tell, uh, there wasn't any, you know, one through three of another title or anything else uh, that this would be continued from. The only thing that somebody kind of hypothesized in another uh, article I read is that uh, this was like the fourth, since number four was the first issue, this was like the fourth volume in a series of DC Giants because you had uh, the 80 page Giants, uh, DC Special, they were Giants, and you had what they call the G series of uh, Giants which would be included in the regular numbering of that title that you know featured that character. So uh, apparently this is like a fourth volume so number four is the first issue. Uh, if anybody else has any more info or any thoughts uh, on that I'd, I'd be glad to hear it because uh, I'm not I'm sure, you know, not everything uh, that I say is going to be gospel. But anyway, uh, to get started, I say this has got some funky numbering and issues 4, 5, and 6 uh, all featured a different thing. And then numbers 7 through 13 were part of the uh, numbering of that title which it featured. And then from 14 through 22 uh, was all just, you know, like DC 14, 15, 16, 17, so on. Uh, so first issue... Number four, uh, featuring Weird Mystery Tales with a very cool Bernie Wrightson cover. This thing is really hard to find in high grade just because of the black background. And, uh, you know, a lot of these uh, 100 pagers, the spine is kind of dinged on them because it, so it's, really, it's really hard to find a perfect book. But this was pretty decent grade. Probably call this like a fine plus or a VF minus. You can kind of see the spine. It's not in terrible shape. Uh, like I said, it's got a great Bernie Wrightson cover. Same thing on the back. And this has actually got uh, like five or six pages of uh, Wrightson drawing himself as like an intro, intro to a story, you know, like a horror, or mystery, or sci-fi. Uh, and the stuff that I can't remember from memory on these, I've kind of done some research, anything noteworthy as far as an artist or a story or a first appearance, I've tried to include that. So uh, you know, here you got... Uh, Bernie Wrightson drawing himself, and for the most part, again, these uh, all these are going to be reprints from the Golden and Silver Age. You know, that doesn't make them any less uh, desirable to me, anyway, because this is really the way I learned about DC's history, and uh, just just some great great stories from uh, the 40s on up through the 60s. Uh, you know, I'm as you can tell, I'm pretty enthusiastic about this stuff. So we'll try to find another Bernie Wrightson page. Uh, He's got some gag pages, I think, by Dave Manick and uh, actually uh, Sergio Arjones, guy who did a lot of the plop and the Mad Magazine stuff. Uh, oh, and here's something to note. Uh, here is actually a reprint of the first appearance of the Phantom Stranger. And uh, for Phantom Stranger fans, uh, he originally had a series uh, in the early 50s. It only ran six issues. I think Carmine and Patino did the art. Uh, but it only ran six issues, and uh, like probably the one that uh, most everybody's familiar with is the series that started like in '69 or '70. It had the Jim Aparo and Neil Adams art, but this is actually that reprint of the first appearance from Fam Stranger number one. So that kind of makes it noteworthy. Let's see if I can find another rights page. Yeah, here's one with uh, monsters. Like I say, this is just pretty much introducing the story. But uh, all in all, just a really cool book. Uh, like I said, here's some more Arizona's art. And uh, 
One other thing in here, one of these reprints is uh, from a title called, a little known DC title called Sensation Mystery. And actually all that was, was um, it was just a continuation of the old Sensation comics from the 40s that first uh, featured Wonder Woman and Heroes Like Wildcat and Mr. Terrific, I think. Uh, but anyway, just a, you know, it's a cool book to have for several reasons. Um, so, number four. That's actually, like, a lot of these I've got duplicates. Uh, I've tried to, like, obtain a higher grade copy. You know, I've still got, I think, just about all of my original copies that I had as a kid. And uh, here's another copy I found. It's a slab copy. It's like a 5.0, and this is actually not in as good shape as that one because it's got some issues, uh, you know, some creases on the back that puts it in a 5.0. But anyway, cool book. Uh, number five, uh, Love Stories. Uh, yeah, this was the hardest one to obtain. Uh, you know, I've seen it pop pop up on eBay once in a while, and I've seen it at a couple conventions, but, you know, somebody's always wanting a war price for it. And uh, I actually got this one uh, probably 50% off of what a lot of other dealers were offering it for. Uh, so this is pretty decent grade. I'd, I'd call this maybe a, a VG Fine or Fine Minus. You know, you got some uh, issues with the spine there. Like I say, these are hard to find. Uh, in really high grade and on this one uh, probably the only noteworthy thing as far as artists I mean you got some John Romita art in here uh, when he was working for DC uh, you got Wally Wood inking Rick Estrada I think uh, Tony DeZuniga has some art in here otherwise it's you know all this stuff's kind of formulaic so but anyway just for the collectability of it you know I just thought it was uh, kind of cool to actually finally get this one and here's a uh, just a replica reprint that came out several years ago. Uh, I always kind of like the, the art on the back. It was kind of stylistic. thought it was pretty cool. Okay, number six. Uh, featuring the world's greatest superheroes now. This is my original copy. <laughs> it is beat all to shit. You know, I've read this. I think when I bought it, it didn't even have a cover or a... Uh, I think I got it like at a second hand store or something, but it didn't have a cover, and I think the first few pages were missing. But this is actually it reprints the uh, first uh, team up between the Justice League and the Justice Society. Uh, the, always a classic story, uh, Crisis on Earth 2 or whatever it was, but it's got a lot of great uh, Golden Age stories in it. Uh, I think it's got a Golden Age Spectre, Johnny Quick, uh, Vigilante. I think it's got like the third uh, Silver Age uh, a reprint of the third Silver Age appearance of the Hawkman by Kubert. Uh, so for a lot of reasons, it's a cool book to have. Uh, here's the replica. Like I say, this is a uh, this is an awesome Neil Adams wraparound cover. As you can tell, you saw uh, the what was then the Earth One Wonder Woman in her uh, Emma Peel stage when she lost her powers. Got the Golden Age Superman in the back and uh, Earth Two Robin. And Red Tornado, my favorites. And you actually have the Earth 2 Wonder Woman in between the Earth 1 Superman and Batman. Um, and I've got, uh, in the original, I've got two pretty high, two more pretty high grade copies of that, of the original. I think these are probably like a fine plus to a VF. And uh, a little anecdote about this. Uh, when Jack Kirby came to work for uh, DC in 71, I think uh, one of the editors was showing showing him the original art for this cover and asked him what he thought, and he hated the cover. <laughs> he, he actually hated the cover. You know, he said there's there's no action. You know, and you know, Kirby fans know the what his covers looked like. Man, they were like coming right at you. So he actually hated the art uh, for this cover just because there wasn't any action in it. So I thought that was kind of funny. Okay, that was number six. Uh, now this uh, number seven starts the numbering. 7 through 13, where it's included in the, the title of the character that it's featuring. So this is uh, DC-7, but it's also Superman number 245. And this is the only copy I have of this one. There might be just a few of these that I don't really have an upgrade for yet, uh, but I'll be showing all of them. So uh, anyway, you have a great uh, Kurt Swan, Murphy Anderson wraparound cover. Uh, there's the back. You have Kid Eternity, Hawkman. Uh, I think there's like a Golden Age Airwaves story. 
and a little known character called Super Chief. Uh, I think Carmine Infantino did some of these. Uh, Gil Kane did the Adam feature. Uh, you have a team up with uh, Brainiac and Luther. Uh, this one's in pretty decent shape, spine wise, anyway. A little ding there. But I say these things are hard to find in higher grade. So, number seven, also Superman 245. Okay, number eight, DC 8 is also Batman 238, as you can tell. Uh, another Neil Adams wraparound. This is kind of a uh, might put this like in a VG. I really need to upgrade this one. But uh, you have uh, Batman. I think there's a Jack Cole Plastic Man story in this one. Uh, Silver Age Sargon. Uh, I'm thinking uh, there's like a unpublished Golden Age Adam story in this. And I think that was that probably happened a few times where they had something in the files and they just decided to go ahead and because uh, it never had been published in the 40s and they would just publish it in this book. Like I say, this was kind of a lower to middle grade. It's kind of beat up. Uh, but it's got the Legion of Superheroes in there. And you have the Doom Patrol. So a pretty cool book. I think the Sargon the Sorcerer story is by Joe Kubert, if I remember right. Okay, number nine, which is also uh, Our Army at War 242, featuring Sergeant Rock. Uh, it's got a cool Joe Kubert cover. I've got a, a couple copies of this, so I'll take this one out. Uh, got a great wraparound cover. And basically, in this, uh, you have the same guys doing the art. You have uh, Joe Kubert, uh, Sam Glansman, Russ Heath. Uh, I think Jerry Grandinetti did some of the stories in these. Uh, so basically just your uh, basic DC War book. Like I say, they're all reprints. Uh, nice page by Joe Kubert, Johnny Cloud. I know uh, Paul Brandon, he's a big fan of the DC War book, so here's a here's a shout out to you, Paul. I'm sure he's got this. Okay. Here's my higher grade copy. I'm trying to put all the high grade copies in Mylar so I won't have to rebag them anymore. So and number ten is also uh Adventure Comics number 416, the only 100 pager in that run. And this one is almost too hard to find, especially in high grade, as the number five is the love stories, just because, uh, you know, I think it was aimed more towards uh, girls, because this features like all the DC female superheroes. I think this is a Bob Oskner cover. Uh, other wraparound. Have uh, a fan of lady. I think uh, you know DC acquired the rights to all the quality characters, uh, characters like uh, uh, you know Plastic Man and Phantom Lady, and Human Bomb, Doll Man, uh, Uncle Sam. You know all the ones that later on became the Freedom Fighters. Uh, but uh, you have a Golden Age Black Canary story. Uh, you have Mary the Girl of One Thousand Gimmicks, and if I'm not mistaken, I think she was related to uh, the Star Spangled Kid in some way. She was like a sister or an ant or something, I'm not really sure. I'm sure somebody can tell me. Uh, but uh, has some uh, kind of oddball stuff in there. I think a lot of the Supergirl stuff was uh, drawn by Jim Mooney, who did a lot of work for Marvel in the 70s. It's kind of a tough book to find in grade. Okay. This is the only copy I have of this one. I need to upgrade this one. Uh, DC 11. Also, uh, Flash 214. And this is uh, your basic Flash stuff. I think a lot of these covers are by Nick Carty. Uh, but you have a Doom Patrol, uh, Metal Man. Uh, I think there's like a, I don't know if it's an unpublished, I believe it is an unpublished Golden Age Flash story in here. Uh, I 
like I say, this one's like lead to, or mid to lower grade. You know, it's kind of the spine's kind of split on that one. So, but uh, you got a gold maze Johnny quick story. Uh, and actually, uh, you got a Quicksilver story. It's another one of those characters that DC acquired and uh, Quicksilver. Uh, for you fans of the Flash books, uh, later on became uh, the guy known as Max Mercury. So, like I say, you have the Doom Patrol. A lot of Flash uh, robes gallery in the background. Okay. And number 12 is also uh, Superboy 185. This is my original copy. <laughs> been read quite a bit. Uh, like you had George Papp on the art, a lot of these early uh, Superboy stories. Uh, here's the higher grade copy I have of it. Another Nick Cardi cover. I think you got uh, an early Legion story from Adventure Comics. Uh, Golden Age reprint of uh, a little known character called Little Boy Blue. Teen Titans story in here. And I think this is a reprint of the first appearance of Wonder Girl with the Teen Titans. So for that it's kind of noteworthy. And I believe uh, there's a Kid Eternity story in here too. So pretty nice copy. Okay, uh, DC-13 is also Superman 252. Uh, I'm sure a lot of you have seen this cover. It's a Neil Adams wraparound. The world's greatest flying heroes. Uh, like I said, has some... Uh, there's two Golden Age Superman uh, reprints in this. Uh, like I said, it's got a great cover. It's the only copy of this one I have. Uh, but you got the uh, Kid Eternity and the Keeper, you have Johnny Quick, Black Racer for some reason, and Black Condor, Starman, Martian Manhunter. Like you have both sets of uh, Hawkman and Hawk Girl, both Green Lanterns. And on the front you have uh, Spectre and Doctor Fate, Red Tornado, Shining Knight. A lot of cool, uh, a lot of cool stuff in here. Uh, and I think the uh, the Ray story is also by Lou Fine. So for that, it's worth it. Okay, number fourteen. And this just uh, and this reverts back to just like the regular numbering. So uh, so instead of like number whatever, you have just like the DC slash fourteen. Uh, this Batman one. Another uh, Nick Cardi wraparound. And I'm thinking uh, something kind of. Uh, it's either in this or another, I'm not sure, but uh, like I said, it's got some Golden Age reprints of uh, Doll Man, Wonder Woman, Black Hawk, Golden Age Batman reprints. Um, there's, I think there's some Reed Crandall art in here. Let's see. Let's see. You can see uh, some great Golden Age Batman stuff. And here's my reading copy of that one. Still pretty decent grade. Okay, uh, DC-15 featuring Superboy. Uh, you got uh, a couple Superboy stories from the Silver Age, Aquaman, uh, Boy Commandos, and the uh, Sandman Golden Age reprints by uh, Jack Kirby, Joe Simon. I think you have a Gil Kane Hawk and Dove story in this one. Copy. It's got a big 
crease all the way through the back there. And then chips. But it's pretty good stuff. Uh, like I said, I got some great looking Gil Kane artwork on Hawk and Dove. And that's actually the series that uh, Steve Ditko started out on. Like the first couple of issues. And I got a couple more copies of that one. Uh, pretty decent grade on this one. This is probably the DF. Team number 16, we got more Sergeant Rock. We got stories in here uh, Captain Storm, uh, Mademoiselle Marie. Same guys doing the art, uh, Jerry Grandin, Joe Kubert, uh, Russ Heath. Got a, another copy of that one. Okay, number 17, featuring the JLA. Uh, this is my reader copy, obviously. It's got a couple great reprints. I think maybe the first appearance of the Royal Flush Gang. It's got a Nick Carty cover. Uh, this is like reprinted from JLA 23. They face the Queen Bee. And uh, then you have a Golden Age Justice Society story from All Star Comics uh, with the Injustice Society. And here's the uh, high grade copy of that one. Okay, number DC 18 featuring Superman. Uh, I'm thinking there's a, like a Silver Age Superboy reprint in this, uh, Golden Age Adam, uh, Our Man, uh, TNT, and Dan the Dynamite. I'm not sure if this was a wraparound or not, but uh, yeah, I think when it wasn't a wraparound, it kind of showed the covers that the original stories came from. Like I say, you have the two uh, Superman stories. Or you have uh, Silver Age Adam by Gil Kane. And you have a Captain Triumph story. Uh, I think it's another quality character. Uh, it's a reprint from Crack Comics. Any of you that are Justice Society fans, uh, in the 90s there was a great series called The Golden Age. And it was it was an Elseworlds tale. And uh, it kind of featured Captain Triumph. He had a big part in that story. So uh, anybody that's a fan of the JSA or The Golden Age, uh, I would seek that series out. Uh, a lot of great reprints. I'm going to like I say, more great Gil Kane art with the Adam here. I'll tell you a funny story. I started, I actually started doing this video last night. And I think I'd already talked about 25 or 30 minutes. And then I realized it had stopped. And uh, I'd used up all the memory on my iPad because... It just told so much, and I had like a bunch of other videos that I hadn't deleted yet that I'd already uploaded to YouTube, and I got through about 20 minutes of it and realized, oh crap. So this is my second try on this one, so hopefully it'll go good. Uh, here's a high-grade copy of that one. Sorry about the glare. but Okay, this is one I do need to upgrade. Uh, it's number 19, it's Tarzan. It's a pretty beat up. Uh, not much special about this. I mean, it, unless you're a Tarzan, Joe Kubert fan, and a fan of Russ Manning, because all three of these uh, stories are uh, reprinted from the newspaper strip, and they're all by Russ Manning on the interior. So, but for Tarzan fans, it's a pretty cool book. Like I say, I've obviously read this one quite a few times. Need to upgrade it though. Okay, number twenty. Oh, this is good. And this is a. Uh, I still got the sticker. I never took this one. Rebagged this one. I got this from Mile High several years ago. Uh, this is Batman. I got some great Golden Age reprints. Uh, Spectre, Black Canary, Doctor Midnight, Black Hawk. Uh, it's actually reprints the uh, first appearance and the origin of Two Face, and the end of Two Face, which you know uh, I'm sure it wasn't, but uh, it's a great, uh, great book. See on the back, it kind of shows the original covers. These stories appeared in. Uh, here's the old Black Hawk from 
quality comics. You have the old detective comics covers. Uh, just some great, great stuff. You know, got the Spectre by Menard Bailey. So like I said, that was the cool thing about the, uh, the hundred pagers. I mean, you got a you got a chance to see some of DC's history, and you know when I started collecting comics, these were like the best resource ever for uh, finding out origins and early appearances of uh, a lot of DC characters. And it was the same with Marvel. I think in a lot of the the reprint books they had start like in the mid to late '60s, like Marvel superheroes and uh, fantasy masterpieces and so on. Uh, but a really cool book. For the most part, the uh, all the Batman stuff and the romance stuff, which is a little bit harder to come by, just because of lower distribution. And uh, the first three issues uh, are going to be the, the hardest to find in grade and the more expensive. Uh, here's a high grade copy of that one. Well, probably the ones I've got duplicates of. If I'm probably just going to keep both of those copies, and if I have some. Uh, if I have three copies of it, I probably would be interested in doing a trade or uh, maybe selling some of those. So uh, if I've just got two copies of it, I'm going to keep them. Uh, if i got three, I'm probably going to deal. So for anybody that's curious. Okay, number 21, uh, featuring Superboy. Um, it's another Nick Carty cover. I think you got a Golden Age uh, Kid Eternity. Some more Teen Titans. I think this is actually reprints the first appearance of the Teen Titans from uh, Brave and Bold 54. Got a Supergirl and a Legion story. And I'm not sure if they had a... Yeah. That showed the issues that these originally came from. Adventure Comics, Kid Eternity. Uh, I think this uh, reprints... Uh, or Lightning Lad lost his arm. If you're a Legion fan, you'll kind of remember he had a mechanical arm for a while and he lost it to the Moby Dick of space. And I'm sure there's all kinds of jokes that can go with that, but I'm not going to touch them. And like I said, here's the uh, the original cover of the first appearance. And they actually didn't call them the Teen Titans then. It was just Kid Flash, Robin, and Aqualad. I think in the second or third appearance, Wonder Girl showed up and they started calling themselves the Teen Titans. So for that, it's a... Uh, Pretty cool book to have. I'm trying not to let these run too long, but they're probably going to be like 25 or 30 minutes a piece. Uh, here's a higher grade copy. Like I say, the most of the issue you're going to have with the spine, and even in high grade, they're still going to have some dings in them. Uh, but this is not too bad shape. Okay, and the uh, Last issue of the original run, before it started uh, bleeding over into the regular titles, uh, was number 22, featuring The Flash. And this has got a lot of cool stuff uh, versus Captain Cold. You got a Golden Age uh, Flash story, Johnny Quick. You got reprints of the story where the Kid Flash's costume changed from a, just a copy of uh, Barry Allen's costume to the one uh, everybody kind of got used to in the late 60s and 70s. So I think it's got some, uh, probably got the covers on the back. And I think the covers come loose from that one. No cover on that one, so it should be on this, so my other copy. Yeah. Kind of shows you the issues that that was reprinted from. Some all flash, and uh, another flash got elongated man in here. Grade. Let's say uh, a lot of the early flash was uh, Infantino art. Uh, Johnny Quick by Mort Meskin. So, and that's the last issue, last issue of the original run. Now the other ones will be. Uh, just included in the regular numbering of that title that it came from. 
But that's the end of part one. Uh, guys, if you've hung around for all 30 minutes of this, I appreciate it. And uh, like I say, if, if there's something I left out that somebody else knows, I'd be glad to hear it. And if there's any more questions that I can answer, I'd be glad to. Uh, so look for part two real soon. Uh, like I say, thanks for hanging around and commenting. And uh, as always, forward and upward.